Good morning, my friends. I'm Clover, and this is a puzzle called Quads and Trips by Philip Newman. This was originally posted in GAS on June 2nd, 2024. So let's have a look at it. So we have standard Sudoku rules, so we're placing the digits 1 through 9 once each in each row, each column, and each outlined 3x3 three three region. And then we also have two variants. One is quadruples, so that refers to these white circles containing digits. The digits in a white circle have to appear somewhere within the four cells immediately surrounding that circle. So for example, we have two, three, four, and five in this one, and so these four cells have to contain the digits two, three, four, and five. Then the other variant we have are Renban lines. Each of these light purple lines represents a set of three consecutive numbers, but those numbers can appear in any order along the line. So in theory, we could have like one, three, two, just because one, two, three is a set of consecutive numbers, but they don't have to show up actually in order. Or we could have a five, or we could have seven, five, six, something like that, because five, six, seven is consecutive, but they don't have to show up in order. And that is going to be all we need to solve this puzzle. So let's have a quick look at it. So I'm going to start by pencil marking in these digits just so I can see them in the grid and don't have to keep kind of referring back to the quadruples. This is something I do pretty frequently when I'm solving on a computer just because I find it easier to kind of have my pencil marks in already and to be able to go back and forth and erase them as I eliminate options. I wouldn't necessarily do things like this on paper. In fact, I definitely wouldn't do this on paper. And I also probably would not approach a puzzle this way if the quadruples weren't complete. So if, for instance, some of them only had three clued digits in them instead of all four or anything along those lines. So now we can see we have one, two, three, and four accounted for in this region already. So that can't be any of those. So that must be five. So we can remove five from the rest of this quad. We have three and four accounted for already here. So that can't be three or four and it must be two. We can remove two elsewhere. So none of those digits are two. My two goes in one of those cells. I have six, seven, and eight accounted for by this quad. So that's gonna be five. And I have six and seven accounted for by this quad. So that will have to be my eight. And so the, this is going to be a 6-7 pair, 8's eliminated from these cells, and 8 appears in one of these cells. And you'll notice that that is symmetrical to what was happening over here also. So now I think we need to turn our attention to some of these Renban lines. So let's go ahead and do that. So I see here that, interestingly, I have two even digits. And so in order for these to be a set of consecutive numbers, I definitely have to have an odd digit that can go in between them. So this definitely is not a two or a four, like two, four, six is not anywhere close to being a set of consecutive numbers. One also isn't gonna work because if I had a one here, the other two numbers to make a consecutive set would have to be two and three, which is impossible. I don't have a three. So that will be a three. And then that means six is too far away to be part of a consecutive set. So that's gonna to have to be a two, four pair. So I'm gonna eliminate three here and eliminate two and four here, leaving me with a six, eight pair. And now I can eliminate six here. Do I get to do something symmetrical over here? I would guess I probably do. So I have two even digits. So there has to be an odd digit in order to fit in between them. Like if you have four and six, you definitely have to have a five to go in between to make a consecutive set. So this has to be odd and it can't be nine because nine would only work with seven and eight, which we can't place here and here because there's no seven. So that's gonna be seven. And then the two digits that form a consecutive set with it will be a six, eight pair. That will now be a two, four pair, which removes two and four, or sorry, removes four from those cells. So we can remove seven here. And one interesting thing to know is that now I know that seven in this region can only go in these two cells and that three in this region can only go in these two cells. That doesn't give me any obvious eliminations yet, but let's just hang on to that. So what's our next move? Let's look at some of these other Renban lines. So this one definitely has a two on it. And so in order to have two in a set of three consecutive digits, we have to have that set be either one, two, three, or two, three, four. This digit can't be either three or four because we know three and four are both in this group of four cells. Therefore, that can only be one. So that's a one, that's a three, and we can eliminate three from these cells. Over here, there are only two ways to form this set using an eight. It could either be seven, eight, and nine, or six, seven, and eight, but this cell can't be six or seven. So the only possible remaining digit will be a nine, making this a seven. So we can eliminate seven from those cells. Now I'm gonna pencil in one, two, and three here. 
because those are my three remaining digits in the region. This can't be a two thanks to the two four pair and the two here. This can't be a one because there's a one there already. I'll also pencil in seven, eight, and nine here and eliminate eight from this cell and nine from that cell. Now I'm going to pencil mark in my digits here because I see something to do with this Renban that I want to kind of articulate clearly. So I need six, seven, eight, and nine to finish this region. And these two cells can't be seven because there's a seven in the column already. Now, how am I going to make this Renban? I have one digit that's bigger than nine for sure and one digit that's smaller than nine. So the only way to make this work out at all is for it to be four, five, six. And that makes this a three because of the quadruple. And that three is going to resolve this into a one. Now over here, I need to place one, two, three, and four to finish region eight. This can't be three because of the three in the column. And now here on this Renban, I have one digit that's smaller than five. That'll be my four and then a six, which is larger than five. I can eliminate six there and make that a seven to finish off my quadruple clue. This is not a seven anymore, so that's a seven. And this three eliminates three here, so this is going to be a three. This is also not a six because of the six in the column. And this is not a four because of the four in the column. So I can pencil in some of these columns. I have a one, two pair, a four, a five, and a seven, and a three. So these need to be six, eight, and nine. And that's not a nine. Here, similarly, these cells need to contain one, two, and four, and that is not a one. This four resolves the two, four pair. This six resolves the six, eight pair. This six resolves this six, eight pair. This four resolves this two, four pair. This is not a six because of the six there, so that's my six. This is not a four because of the four in row two, so that's my four. Now, if we look at these run bands, we can't have a repeated digit on a run band because then it wouldn't be a consecutive set. It would be like five, five, six or something like that. That's not a consecutive set of digits. Um, there has to just be one of each for the whole set. So this can't be a six because we already have a six. So this is now a six, making this an eight, a nine, and a six. So similar reasoning, this can't be a four, so that's a four, making this a two, a one, and a four. And I'm gonna go ahead and resolve the effect that that has on these regions using Sudoku. So now if we go down this column, we still need a one, a five, and a nine. The five has to go there, the nine has to go there, the one has to go there. So we can place a nine in this region now. And I believe that we are to the point of just being able to do Sudoku to finish this off. So let's have a look. So in this row, we need two and seven. They'll go there and there, which resolves this. In this row, we still need three and eight. They'll go there and there, which resolves this. In this row, what do we still need? So we don't have anything easy there. We still need one, five, seven, and nine. That can't be one or seven. That can't be one, that can't be seven, and that can't be nine, okay. Here we still need one, three, five, and seven to finish this region. That can't be our seven. These cells can't be three. Okay, that's gonna be it. So we're gonna have a hidden three in region nine that can only go in that position. That's not a nine, so that's a five, seven pair, making that a one and a nine, a five and a seven. Now here we need to place a two and a six, and because we already have a two in column eight, they'll go this way around. And that should finish the entire right-hand side of the grid. So in row one now, we have three, seven, and nine. We have three and seven there, so that's going to be a naked nine, a three and a seven. And now in this column, we have three and five. In this row, we need to finish off with one and nine, which will go in those two positions. And then finally, we're going to finish this with a four and an eight, which resolve our last two cells. And that is how you solve trips and quads by Philip Newman. Send Philip a little bit of love in the comments. He's had a, uh, a hand injury, a, a furniture assembly related hand injury and, and is struggling a little bit um, speed solving on camera. So send him a little bit of extra love in the comments if you don't mind. Uh, thanks, for, thanks for watching, thanks for hanging out. If you wanna solve the puzzle yourself, the link is in the comments or in the description right below this video. Enjoy and I will see you next time. Have a good one.